Alan um, from Afrinic, Andre from Ripe, uh, Craig from Apinic, John from Aaron, Michael from Aaron, uh, Mwandwa, I believe, from Afrinic, Murani from Ripe, Paul from Ripe. And so these are the people that I see on the call, listed on the call. So is there any um, Chris team members who are at the call, but I haven't called the name. Of course, I see uh, Haman uh, joining us from the um, SNR Secretariat. And now I see Esteban from LACMIC. Great. So um, let's start. And we do have very full agendas. I'd like to be quite uh, quick in going through each of them. So um, first, um, going through the re, um, action reviews, um, that's agenda number two. And then um, to date, I'd like to especially focus on agenda three and four to confirm new comments since the last call, the last seventh call, and then also to confirm our Chris team positions per issues um, that I've listed here. And then, um, and then lastly, to prepare for the second draft um, and especially to confirm topics to be reflected in the second draft and then the announcement. Maybe this agenda that's posted up here is, uh, uh, is a uh, version that I sent only to the Chris team members and then uh, it's a little bit different from the one that I sent to the NRO list. But um, <laughs> this still should give you a rough um, idea of what we're going through today. So um, is there anything else that you'd like to discuss um, that's not on the agenda? No, nope. I didn't hear from anybody. So um, let's start with actions review agenda number two. So I see minutes from the last meeting, the seventh meeting already posted up on our website. And then um, I also saw the announcement from um, NRO Secretariat to that all the recordings of the past meetings are now available on MP4. Thank you so much for the Secretariat for working and going through all of this. So I think um, 2A and B are done. And then um, 2C, version control of drafts. Um, would Herman be able to give us an update? Uh, yes, uh, this is work in progress. Um, I just uh, find out uh, that I'm uh, still missing a few do Word documents, um, but I'm um, um, requested uh, the, the, the documents are still uh, missing. Um, I just started to publish um, some documents with some version control, uh, like uh, the timeline, the crisp timeline, uh, but still uh, need to update uh, uh, others like uh, the, uh, the the draft version that were used uh, for the, the initial discussions. But um, uh, that's in progress yet, in any case. Understood. Um, thank you for the status. And I think as long as we have this uh, sorted out before we release the second draft, then um, I'm not seeing major confusions at this stage. So um, it should be all right. Thank you, Herman, for working on this. So uh, let's move on to agenda item number three, uh, to confirm new comments since the last call. And um, instead of going through each RIR region, if there is any region that um, is um, having discussions that's not shared on the global list, um, please um, share it. Um, please raise it here. And then if I don't see uh, or hear from anybody, I would simply assume that um, there's no notable discussions on the regional list. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands or people um, are wanting to speak. So um, let's move on to confirm new comments since the seventh call. And uh, so 3B on the global list. So um, the only new comment that I observe um, since the last call is the feedback from um, the lead, um, which she made um, three uh, suggested changes in our draft, which we um, I actually raised on the Christine mailing list. And um, 
I think we still haven't uh, quite um, properly covered the comments from uh, JP Nick, which Alan has already um, shared on the Christine mailing list and started driving the discussion. So, um, is there any other comments that you observe that I haven't raised and we should discuss? No. Nope. Okay, so um, let's move on to agenda item number four. So um, I think this agenda listed on this um, WebEx page doesn't um, cover all the issues that, that I'd like to discuss actually. So um, if you are able to take a look at the, the email that I've sent to um, the um, global mailing list, um, I'd like to first follow up on the issues that we've already discussed, which are intellectual property rights, contract, and review committee. So first, I um, would like to cover the status of the intellectual property rights. Um, my, uh, my understanding of this status is Andre has shared Christine's position on the global mailing list, and we received one feedback about whether there has been an agreement uh, from the IETF and NAMES community about um, transferring this, um, this trademark of IANA.org uh, to IETF Trust. And that's about the additional comments that we've received. Um, is there anything you would like to add, Andre? Thank you, Zemir. Um, no, I think that's correct. There was support for the uh, proposal, I think, uh, um, coming from Hans Peter Holland and Richard Hill. Um, and also observe this, this comment that you just mentioned. I think that's correct. And uh, the thing is that, indeed, our proposal is somewhat de dependent on, on other entities and other communities, the naming community and the IETF trust itself. Um, that's why I think we phrased, or, or I haven't suggested the, the final phrasing to be included in the response, but our draft proposal was to have a more um, well, less strong language and say that's a preference of the community um, because we cannot say that's how it should be or how that how it will be because there, there are those dependencies. Um, I think hopefully that will address this concern. Yeah, Andre, and um, I'm actually quite comfortable with the way you have phrased this wording that we haven't really specified that IETF trust is the only um, way to transfer, but we have actually um, listed on this IETF trust very specifically to show our desire that this is uh, one of the strong options that we actually desire. So it does add some flexibilities um, in case other entities don't agree with the IETF trust. So um, given that um, there's general support for this um, summary um, that Andre has shared, and there's no further comment, if there's no further comments within Christine, um, I wonder if you're comfortable to um, move on to reflect this um, general position into the second draft. Does anybody feel that um, there are other issues that we should actually discuss? or clarify related to intellectual property rights? No. Then um, I'd like to have uh, somebody to volunteer on um, drafting the actual wording to be reflected uh, on the second draft. And um, any volunteers um, who's willing to work on the actual wording? for our proposal. Zumi, I can certainly continue working on that issue and pr propose for the Chris team some text for the inclusion in the second version of the draft uh, response. Perfect. Great, Andre. Thank you. So I think we're done with IPR issue. And then, um, so there are two other issues that we've been discussing. One is related to the contract, and the second is related to review committee. So first, um, I'd like to um, cover the issue of the contract, how far we, we cover the, um, the items that um, will be covered in our contract. And um, I, I do note that um, Paul has um, shared this draft of 
the main principles to be included in the um, in the SLA, which is very helpful as a reference. And then in addition to this, I think there's actually one comment uh, on the NLO list um, based on Alan's draft that I think um, it's, it was from Sun that um, he, want, he wanted this term to be not fixed but be continuing unless there's a certain condition to terminate the, the contract. So um, this might be another thing that we'd like to confirm our position. So um, before this is a little bit um, detail into the details of the contract. So first, um, Paul, would you like to share um, anything notable about the contract, um, the items that you've shared on the Christian mailing list? Hi there, Izumi. Thank you. Um, actually, I, I, I would just look very much forward to everybody's feedback on this. I think that, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know about the having a not fixed term. That uh, I'm not really quite sure about that. I think we should discuss that a little bit more. I'm, I, I don't know if I'm at, at this point willing to say yes. I think that's a good idea. I think if you look at this, I wrote in the in the in the little text when I submitted this that I thought it was really important for us when we're looking at these, at these principles that we're really trying to make sure that we position the RIR communities as the ultimate stewards of the internet number resources and of the registry. And I think that the, while they are not you know, exhaustive of what's in that contract, I think a lot of the other contract points that you get into are things that would be dealt with by, by RIR CEO's board and their, and their legal counsel, right? But I think the parts that would assure and position the communities as the stewards of the Internet Number Resources and the uh, registry is really something I think that is in the scope of, of, of CRISP to outline. So that's, that's, that was the, uh, you know, I, that was the reasoning that this was the reason behind what was done here. Um, but I, I still would like to see feedback on this if anyone has that, and I would like further feedback from others on what they think about some position about um, having the no fixed uh, contract period. I'm not really quite sure if we would have agreement on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. So um, let me just uh, give my personal observation, which I already shared on the Christy mailing list uh, as well. I think that it does, uh, to, in my perspective, it does seem to cover the major important points that we, we discussed within the Chris team. But um, as Paul has encouraged, um, I, I do really welcome um, additional feedback from the, the members of the Chris team, especially with those who have um, um, legal um, knowledge and um, have been reviewing the, um, the NTIA contract. If there's no immediate feedback at this stage um, at the call, uh, what, oh yes, um, Ronnie. Thank you, although well, I think Alan actually flagged before me. If you want to go first, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I think I've been totally missing the, all the chat. I'm, tot I'm very sorry. So, Alan, uh, please. And I also see Michael's uh, offer to support Andre in the draft for the IPR. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I initiated a discussion on the IANA transfer mailing list about the contract term. And... Um, there's a message from Sion dated uh, 2nd of January. That's his most recent message in the thread titled Contract Details. And um, I get the impression that the reason he wants a uh, continuous contract rather than a fixed term is because of the, uh, the process of renewal every few years or, or at the end of the term will require resources and he's concerned about the resource consumption. I assume he means time and effort and money. Um, my personal opinion is that we don't need to worry too much about that. Um, if we have a review committee, then uh, the, the output from that review committee will say whether or not we think the IANA contractor is fulfilling their obligations. And uh, sending a, a a brief um, 
update to the contract to renew the term should not consume much resources over and above that. So I don't share Sean's concern there. Thanks. Thank you for this uh, observation and comment, Alan. So um, please, Nirani. Thank you. Um, well, I agree with, with Alan's comments uh, uh, about the review committee. And, and uh, now I think it, it makes sense to have uh, a, a fixed term uh, for two reasons. One, if I start just speaking for myself, I think um, the fixed term also gives flexibility in terms of the SLA and if, uh, if there are reasons to make amendments of the SLA between each term. The other reason is something I talked about at the last call, uh, trying to represent the rights community. We got very strong feedback from the rights community that uh, we need to define it in such a way that it is the, the numbering community that has uh, the control and the power here. We don't want to make it hard to terminate a contract. Um, and I think having a, a non-fixed term would make it very hard to terminate the contract. Thank you. Thank you, Nurani. Um, are there any other comments related to um, this term of the contract or any other elements um, that's listed as the uh, SLA? So I see support from um, Paul and um, please, Andre. First of all, I, I think uh, those are very good principles that Paul uh, sent to the list. I agree with all of them. I also agree with what Nurani just said about the term and, and the reasoning for fixed-term contract. A uh, uh, slightly different issue that I would like to uh, – it's not an issue, really. It, it, it's probably just a, a wording suggestion. Um, I suggest we make the principles related to IPR um, consistent with our position that we just discussed and uh, say more explicitly that uh, pub re public registry data is in the public domain and all the parties, the ARIRs and I can acknowledge that. So that's just a wording suggestion for the, for the SLA principle. Thank you, Andre. Um, is everybody comfortable with um, adding this um, part of this public domain um, in addition to the current um, um, IPR element of the SLA. So there's support from Paul and support from Nirani, and I see Michael's hand, um, please. Yes, thank you. I actually I was just going to comment on the contract term issue, so I don't know if you wanted to just check and see if there's any comment on that, and then I can come back around to that. Thank you. Um, I'm not seeing anybody else um, uh, raising their hands to comment, except for several comments um, expressed to support Andre's um, a suggestion to add this, um, to, um, this um, element related to the public domain. So please go ahead. Okay. Um, well, with regard to the contract term issue, I actually do support the idea of having a uh, contract term, you know, a specific term identified. This might be just an example of you know, getting into the details versus, you know, the overarching idea, um, because from a legal perspective, there are, you know, a host of options that we can support for that, you know, or actually consider, whether it be a specific term and how long that term is, whether we can have um, kind of automatic renewals if they're worried about the resource issue, which I actually agree is probably not a big concern, but if the resource issue did become a concern, you know, you could have a contract that's automatic renewal, but then, um, you know, we have the option of not renewing if either we're unhappy with the service that's falling short of a breach or, you know, we wish to explore a different operator at some point, the RIR community. Um, so I think that there are definitely a bunch of different options. Uh, I do support the idea that having a, a term rather than just an indefinite uh, continuing relationship, I think it helps to prevent any expectation that this is somehow some entitled uh, relationship and you know I just wanted to bring up this thank you 
Thank you, Michael, for um, a well expressing support, also um, sharing some of the possible options available. So I see a comment from um, Amawanda that um, he supports the uh, fixed term uh, of the contract. And um, it's, a, it's a good point to reflect and access the performance of the IANA operator. And I think the idea is to make sure that we are happy with um, the SART service. And if they don't meet the SLA, then we can um, discontinue um, the contract. So thank you for this uh, comment, Mwandua. So if there are no other different comments related to the contract, um, then um, what I would like to encourage is to everybody to review the, the draft that uh, Paul has shared again online and then um, give your feedback on any other elements in addition to Andre's suggestion um, um, about the items that's listed. So, um, and then I'd like to confirm how we would actually like to reflect this uh, part um, on our proposal. So, um, I don't know if we want to put this as the annex of our proposal and refer it as a reference or, um, um, Paul, do you have a specific idea at this stage on how you, you actually wanted to um, reference or incorporate this in our proposal, or did you simply want it, um, this to be discussed by Christine? Uh, sorry, Izumi? Um, yeah, I, I think it, it should be part of the proposal, in my, my, in my opinion. I mean, it could be an annex, or, or, uh, but I think it should be part of the proposal. I would like to see it put there. I think it would be, I think our communities would probably like to see this um, as within the spirit of, of, of them having uh, the position of, of, you know, having the stewardship of, of what we're talking about here. So I think it should be part of the proposal. Okay, understood. And I see support um, comments from Nurani. So um, let's, um, if there's no other comments uh, related to this, then let's, um, let's incorporate this as a part of a proposal. And I'd like to um, ask for volunteers on, well, I don't know if we're happy to reflect this exact wording as it is, or um, so maybe if you would be able to volunteer, Paul, would you be able to work on which section that this should be incorporated so that Michael knows what, to, um, what exactly to incorporate? Sure, sure. Thank you, uh, Paul. Yeah, we will, we will take that up, Azumi. We will produce the text for that. And then Great. I just can make a suggestion on where it, where, where it can slot, but I would love for other people's comments on, on where it needs to go. I guess we can make, make a suggestion, and then uh, everybody can give their uh, support or, or say where it needs to go, and then Michael can work it in. Thank you so much, Paul. And I see Nirani can um, help Paul in writing this. So thank you, Nirani. So um, Paul and Nirani would be uh, working together on this draft. So, um, so in the meanwhile, um, well, I think you can start working in parallel to work on the actual wording, but um, I would like to um, maybe set a um, 24-hour deadline after this call um, on any additional elements or changes that um, Truth Team members would add to the current um, items that's listed. Would that work for you, Anurani? That's fantastic. You drive a hard bargain, Azumi. We'll do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, um, so let's uh, move to um, 3C. It's related to some of the comments um, that's raised on um, adding some additional details of, um, on review team. One of the comments that I see on the list, is, I think there has been quite specific comment, again, I think I, I recall by Sun, about the composition of the review team, like how many members should be elected and such and such. And another point, I think this is related to JP Nick's comment, and I would like to hand over to um, Alan to um, share this part, as this is actually related to um, JPNIC is an organization that I belong to. 
Uh, okay. Um, so let me start with a, a summary of my understanding. Um, there was a message from uh, JP Nick, um, well, sent by Mamura Kenori, but on behalf of JP Nick, I believe, in which he raised several points, and some of them were about the review team. Um, I sent a message to the CRISP list uh, about an hour ago um, with, with my summary of that. And I, I think there, there are three issues that we need to consider. There's um, the qualifications of the CRISP team members. So it shouldn't be just anybody. It should be people who have an understanding of the, the work and the SLA and such. Um, there's the process for performing the review. There was a suggestion that our proposal should um, already go into some detail about uh, exactly what the review should look at. And then third, there's the election process or appointment process for the review team members. And uh, the suggestion from JP Nick was that they should be elected by the communities of the RIRs in much the same way as the uh, NRONC members are elected by the communities. Okay, so um, are there any comments on that? Okay, I, I see a chat message from Mwendwa saying he's wondering how elections and qualifications will fit in. Um, elected members tend to be politicians. Narani, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, well, I, ma I, I think there was, I made my comment on the mailing list. I, I thought the points by Jason Nick were very good uh, and I mostly support them. Uh, I do, have a, however, think, uh, as I said on the mailing list, that we shouldn't here define uh, process and criteria for uh, the election of candidates for, for this review committee. I think that would be best to leave to each RAR community, uh, but I can certainly see, uh, and also in line with some other comments made by, I think, Andrew Dahl, that it might be wise, again, to, to define principles to say uh, that um, uh, representatives need to have a, a good understanding of blah, 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 et cetera, and, uh, but then how that actual process is carried out uh, should be defined by each RIR community. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to point out that the NRONC contains three members from each RIR, and of those three, uh, two are from the community and one is uh, appointed by the, um, by the board or, or some similar structure. Uh, do we think that that kind of thing makes sense for the review committee as well? All right, I see some comments in the chat. Uh, Andre supports what uh, Nuraini said, and um, Wendwa and Paul um, seem to be agreeing with, with my suggestion that we can have uh, three members from each RIR, two from the community and one from the board, well, appointed by the board. Mwendwa says if we use that method, it'll be more acceptable by the community. I, I think that's right. We already have a process and we can just uh, add a new organization to follow a very similar process. Any other comments? All right. Um, could we have a volunteer to integrate this uh, discussion into the document? All right, I'm willing to do that. I volunteer myself. Oh, Paul. 
Uh, yes, um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, in doing this, we are actually leaving this to each of the community's uh, devices to set up this process, right? Although we know who we want to have, we were outlining the, 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 the folks that would be appointed here, it would be the communities to decide how they, how they, how they do this inside of each RIR community, correct? Uh, yes, I think so. My understanding is that we would say we want three, and we want one of those three to be appointed by the RIR board, and we want two to be appointed by the community, but the details of how they do that is up to each RIR to decide for themselves. Each RIR community. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and as I said, I volunteer to integrate text along these lines into the document. All right, um, so I think we've finished with that point. Uh, so, uh, Izumi, could you take over, please? Thank you, Alan, for a very smooth chairing on this part. And then uh, let me move on to agenda item number four. So, um, issues which are not yet being discussed. Um, so one is, it's, it's sort of related to the review committee, but um, it's a point raised by Andrew Dahl, and it's focusing on the review process itself. And he listed a, a couple of principles that um, I think, um, well, I think it's better for you to um, confirm directly um, from, the, I, from the mailing list, um, which are the principles. Um, let me just... Um, confirm what they are. So they, they were pretty much high level principles on we where we should be transparent in our review process and then the um the pub, the review um results should be publicly made available and um what else? Let me just check my email. And um, so I'd like to first um, hear from you whether you agree in incorporating those basic uh, three principles that um, that um, Andrew has listed. Um, I, would it be possible to show it over here on this um, on the screen, or if if not, if it's not possible immediately? Um, my observation, and um, it seems that Nurani agrees with my observation, that this is more very um, consistent with our current practice and not controversial high-level principles, that it's, it's okay to be uh, incorporated as a part of our proposal. So um, I would like to give um, additional 24 hours to respond to the email, that, the email thread that I sent um, on calling for comments, and then let me know if you have any concerns about incorporating this uh, principle. And, um, and another point that I would like to discuss related to this point is that there's been a suggestion about um, whether to define interval to uh, conduct the review. And I'd like to hear your um, feedback on what you feel about this. So Nurani has already um, provided her uh, feedback that it, she's not sure whether Chris team should define a fixed interval at this stage, but it's worth um, describing that we would be having um, review in a certain fixed uh, interval. Uh, I hope this was a fair um, description of um, what your comment, Nurani, and if there's anything you would like to add, uh, please do so. Thank you, Nurani, for confirming that um, it was a fair description. And um, are there any other comments related to this, um, this um, how, how frequently we conduct the review? Um, Alan, please. Um, I sent a suggestion in email, oh, I think a couple of weeks ago, that um, it should be possible to or the RIRs to, to call for an, a review of almost at any time. So even if we have a fixed schedule, suppose it, it might be once every three years, um, it should be possible for the RIRs to choose to hold a review more frequently than that. Um, Izumi, can you still hear me? No? I can hear um, you. 
asking um, if whether I can okay, hear I'm not, you, okay, but I, I didn't catch him, it. So, all right. Um, okay, so okay. it might be just me. Sorry. Um, so my suggestion is that uh, we could have a, a fixed minimum interval minimum frequency, but that more frequent reviews should be possible if requested by um, at least two of the RIRs. Okay. So, understood. So, um, you're, you're suggesting to define a fixed interval, or are you just um, suggesting to share this idea, the, the, con the very concept that we will define a fixed interval, and then, um, but this is um, suggest it to be the longest, and then this can be shortened if there are two other RIRs who wishes to make it shorter. Uh, yes, that's exactly my suggestion. Okay, and I see support from um, Nurani that um, your uh, Alan's suggestion makes sense. Any other comments related to this uh, fixed um, interval? Okay, um, then if I don't hear any other feedback, let's just um, let's incorporate Alan's suggestion in the draft in addition to other three elements that Andrew Dull has raised. Um, so I'll wait for another 24 hours to um, hear feedback from on the mailing list. And then um, in parallel, uh, we can start um, incorporating it into our um, proposal. So again, I'd like to seek um, if there's any volunteers to uh, work on reflecting this part in our proposal. No volunteer at this stage. Um, then let me first move on to another um, issue, and then I'll go back to this and um, to confirm whether there are any volunteers for reflecting this. So, um, so issue 4B, um, this is um, another point raised by Andrew on RIR accountability. He thinks that it's important that um, not only to increase accountability of the ICANN, but RIRs themselves are accountable uh, to the community uh, once we, we actually do the stewardship transition from the NTIA. And <coughs> it seems that under our proposal, we already um, described um, the current accountability reviews that um, we've conducted with the um, accountability metrics. And I wonder if there's anything else that we think we can actually um, think of to add, um, if necessary, to um, address this um, point. Do you think this is sufficient, or is there any elements that we can add in addition to this um, description of the RIR accountability that we have in the draft? I'm not um, hearing any strong comments uh, related to this. So it seems that not um, people don't have a strong opinion whether to work a little bit more on this um, area um, on our draft. And um, so would anybody feel concerned if we just leave the draft as it is and, um, and consider that we actually have sufficiently addressed the area of our accountability? No, seems um, no comment. So we'll keep the current uh, description in the draft as it is, and we are actually describing it. So we can actually, for this particular issue, we'll explain that we have already um, described what's been conducted by the RIRs, and um, so leave it there as a feedback to the community on this point being raised. And I see a comment from Alan that you volunteer. Is that for um, the details of the review process? 
That's how I understood it. So please uh, correct me on the chat if I'm misunderstanding um, what you volunteered for, Alan. And um, so I'd like to move to 4C. So this is um, this is a very interesting and important point. Um, how do we actually determine consensus for the final draft that uh, we we submit to ICG? So for the up to the second draft, we actually seek for the community our feedback, and we're able to conduct discussions. But um, how do we judge whether there's sufficient support for our final draft um, uh, from our community? And I think one of the specific examples um, that Andrew Dow has listed was possibly maybe we just um, have a place where we collect feedback from our community on the final draft, and then we point this um, place to ICG, so not necessarily a part of, as a part of our proposal, but then ICGs can um, can refer to this, um, I don't know, either a mailing list, I don't know, a web page that has uh, different comments, that they are able to observe what are the kind of comments uh, or support that we received for the final draft. So that's, an, that's one idea that's been put on, on as, as a possible way to consider. Does anybody have any comments on this idea? Thank you, Zumi. Andre, um, I think we should use the same process that we use for compiling or incorporating community feedback this time. And I think the issue tracker, the spreadsheet, is, is a very important key element in that. I think we just need to make it very clear to the community the process that we track those issues, we determine if there's sufficient support or uh, objections to the issues raised, that issues are properly reflected by the CREST team, and CREST team reached a certain positions with regards to those issues, and those positions are supported by the community. So I think the issue tracker that we kind of invented for the second version of the draft, we should use the same for the final version of the draft and uh, leave some time for the community to comment on that um, and uh, incorporate. Thank you for this uh, comment. Um, I, uh, this um, makes sense to me and um, I'd like to see if there's any other um, comments from other Chris team members. No, I'm not seeing any hand or um, anybody wanting to comment. So um, I think it does make sense that we, we, we are consistent with the process that um, we, we take for our draft. So in other words, we, we use the global um, IANA transfer mailing list provided by NRO to, um, to um, if people have any further comments, and then we actually share the issues list on how we address um, the comments received from our community. And um, just to understand, um, so if the ICG is wishes to um, confirm what what is the level of support um, being provided um, to the final draft, then I think they can simply refer to the archives of the um, the global IANA mailing list. Um, is my understanding and interpretation consistent with um, Andre and others in Christine? Thank you, Andre, for agreeing. Uh, Craig and Wandra, and I see comment from Nirani that Andre's suggestion makes sense. It's consistent with our current process and um, with the RIS spirit. So excellent. Um, thank you for for this uh, suggestion, Andre. So let's um, let's keep this as a, a process for the final draft as well. And then, so let's uh, move on to the second to the last item in our agenda, which is um, preparation for the second draft. So. Um, I'd like to go through which are the topics to be actually reflected in the second draft. So we have actually gone through and then confirmed volunteers for the issues that we actually already discussed um, on the 
on on this call today. But there are actually other issues that we haven't actually discussed at the call today, where I'm simply seeking feedback um, on the mailing of the Chris team. So um, just to uh, recap on what they are, I. I sent this list um, to the Chris team mailing list earlier today, and I'll just uh, read them out so that you know what they are. Um, give me some patience to find the email that I actually sent uh, to the list. So one of them is definitely um, the the editorial suggestions that have been provided from our village. I think, um, well, I'm quite comfortable. Nurani has uh, um, expressed support to incorporate the suggestions as it is. So if there's no further feedback from Christine um, about this um, after 24 hours, then I would suggest to incorporate this editorial um, changes uh, in our um, final uh, on, on the second draft. And then um, still not able to find my email. Um, and then um, another point is um, the draft from Nurani on section five, the NTIA requirements. And I think um, Alan has provided some additional editorial changes when Nurani has agreed to incorporate. So once this, um, uh, Nurani, if you don't mind sending the, the incorporated version again on the Christian mailing list, and then we can confirm um, with the other members if everybody's happy for the next uh, 24 hours. Then I think we can go ahead and incorporate in the draft. Yes, certainly. I can I send out um, a new text uh, after the end of this call with the changes that you suggested and then Alan's uh, uh, modifications as well. Thank you, Nurani. And um, I actually don't seem to be able to find the list that I sent um, to the mailing list earlier immediately. So what I w would suggest is I'm going to resend this list of, of points that I would simply go ahead and then confirm on the mailing list and so that everybody um, can check um, what, what are the, point, the issues that uh, will be discussed on the um, what are the issues that are to be incorporated as it is um, based on the mailing list um, uh, discussions? And um, does anybody feel any concerns with this approach? No. Then um, I'd like to move on to um, preparation for the announcement. I think this is quite straightforward given that we've already made an announcement for the, um, the first draft. So I think we can just make um, minor changes to the, um, the first announcement. And then I think the change from the last, the first one is that we actually have this Excel uh, spreadsheet of each of the issues that are being raised within the community and then how Chris team has um, addressed each of the issues. It's quite important that we actually clearly um, um, show this to the community. So. Um, I'll actually update um, based on what's being discussed at the call today. And then, um, Andre, please. Sorry, it's rather a question than a comment. Uh, I wonder if we want to provide a difference between version one and version two of the draft. Um, that might be uh, simpler for community to actually reflect on the changes that we introduced since last version. Um, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, I, I was um, assuming that by providing this um, list of issues that's being raised, that would actually naturally be the, the list of, of points that have been changed from the, the initial version. But um, if you think it's better to actually extract um, which other major uh, changes that um, we've made um, to be more simple, I think we can certainly do that too. So um, if um, that approach is better, then we can um, we can summarize the points that the major points that we actually incorporated. And I'm happy to um, 
do the drafting and see if everybody thinks it makes sense. So we can produce a red line document cha showing changes from version 1 to version 2. Certainly, yes. I think um, we can certainly do that. And I wonder if Andre's suggestion was uh, to list the major points or would this uh, providing the red line version simply um, make the point that you wanted to address, Andre? Yeah, it's well. Uh, the thing is, the ITF uh, uh, just by by way of, of publishing documents produces draft between success, uh, the next version and the previous one. So uh, whatever is easier for us, just to highlight the changes. Because some people, um, I think the issues table is is important if people just want to see what kind of issues are addressed. But if people want to look at the actual language and what the differences were made, they might prefer a red line version of the differences. Certainly, yes. So I think we can uh, provide both. And um, so we, we can provide the issues list and then the red line version, um, if that addresses your point. Yes, um, thank you for um, um, expressing um, agreement for this. So uh, let's do this, and um, if I recall, Michael has volunteered to um, <clears throat> be this uh, pen for reflecting all the changes from the um, edited version. So um, I think we can um, start giving the editorial suggestions to uh, Michael so that he can incorporate that and then reflect that as a red line um, version as well as the clean version. So is everybody comfortable with the way we proceed? Not seeing um, any comments. And thank you, Michael, for confirming that um, you have um, correctly agreed to be the pen. And so I think we've covered um, all the agenda items to be discussed at the call today. And um, and I think everybody feels it's a good approach, so thank you. So I'd like to confirm the schedule for the next meeting. Um, I was initially thinking to have another one before we publish it, but it seems that we're quite smooth in working. So just as a, as a backup, uh, may I suggest to have a call on the 7th of uh, January, um, so that's a day before we publish the draft. But if everything works well and things are smooth, we can cancel it. How does that sound? I'm not seeing um, any uh, hand, um, hand up from Paul, please. Hi there, Izumi, thank you. Um, yeah, no, that's a, that's a great suggestion. It'd be good to have one just as a, as a placeholder. And actually, I, I, I think we probably would find something to talk about um, so I, I'm happy for you to go ahead and schedule that uh, if you feel that's the way forward. I wanted to raise something else, um, and that is we've got this wonderful spreadsheet that John's uh, put together, and I know that there's bits that are finished on it and, and kind of issues that are there. I would love to run through the spreadsheet and do the done, 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 done thing um, just to see if there's anything else that's on here that we need to kind of return to. Um, I think that... I kind of walk through it, and there's so many pieces. I don't have my fingers in all of it, of course. I mean, this is all spread amongst us. But it would be great to run through them and just say, yes, done. We've, we've done this all. We're ready to go. Excellent suggestion, Paul. Thank you so much. Um, I, I, I would be very, very happy if um, we can do this because I, I know it's. I think it's better to have more people reviewing this. So, um <laughs> I think uh, her man has uh, helped us post um, the Excel on the NL uh, website, but it might be a little bit um, old version. I think it's, it's a version that uh, John has sent, um, and it's a little bit updated. But I think we can work based on John's version. So let's. Um, so do you want to do this now, Paul, or do you want to do this on the mailing list? I mean, we we have a little bit of time now. It'd be great to just tie up all these little little bits that we have and just see if there's anything missing, we can actually just tackle it now because we do have a little sure. bit of time left. Yeah, good, good point. So um, would uh, people be able to click to the link on I here? Oh, Haman, now may I confirm if this is up on the web page? I am seeing, 
This is the link that you shared with me. I wonder if this works. Oh, thank you for oh, sharing the link. So let's just uh, click to the link. Sorry, that, sorry for um, me. The first one was the, the link to the agenda. The, the, the one you sent is the, is the one I posted the, the, uh, just before the meeting. Oh, no, Ted. Thank you so much. Sorry. So please click on the link that I sent, Tom, um, and that's the Excel sheet that um, John has helped us compile. I think this took a lot of effort, so thank you again, John, for doing this, especially when you had to travel the whole day. So um, has everybody managed to open this song? So let's start. Um, so there's a, um, the first three issues, um, issues from 2A to 5A, those are all intellectual rights property related issues. And then these are all addressed um, by Andre. He has shared the summary on the NRO, um, the global mailing list. So I think, and Andre has um, volunteered to um, work on the actual wording. So that's done. And then let's go to um, A6. Um, so this is some editorial suggestions on, on removing a, a some paragraph on section three and then um, rewording the word from contractor agreement. So these points, I think um, Sun has agreed to uh, stick with our, our current, our latest draft. So I think this issue is closed and completed. And then move on to a seven contract. So I think this is the one that we actually um, discussed um, just now at the call, that the termination or conditions are should be um, not be fixed, and um, that, so we actually agree on the, the general direction here. And a a eight. <clears throat> so this is on review committee, and the review should. He feels review committee may not be required. The review of compliance has to be handled mainly by NROMC and NRO. EC. I think this has already been um, explained by Alan, and he has agreed with the idea that, um, um, and he's, he's okay with our suggestion on not sticking with um, NR or NC and have a separate review committee elected by the community. And A9, that's another point on review committee. So I think he's made some detailed suggestion on electing a member while the chair of the NROEC at any point in time will be co-opted to serve as the review committee and bracket six in total. Um, I'm not quite sure how strongly he feels about this, but um, maybe we can explain to him that we will conduct the um, election in exactly the same way as NLO um, NC, and let's see how he feels. I personally don't see, think um, this would be too much of an issue as long as we clarify that we will have representatives from the community. So this may be something that we might want to do to make sure we, oh, first, I want to ask whether we want to um, explicitly um, create a thread for this and go back, or we, it's simply okay to just uh, explain our position in the spreadsheet, and then he can just check whether he feels comfortable. Spreadsheet, great, yes, that's my preference as well. I think, you know, he can just take a look and see if it's, if he's not comfortable, he can raise it. So I think that would be, um, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. And um, so move on to A8. And um, this is um, policy versus operation. I think he actually had a question why it's not appropriate to have NL and C um, do the review for the iron operation. Again, this has been clarified by Alan on the mailing list. He doesn't have an issue about this anymore, so that's done. Um, A11, um, global PDP. He had uh, suggested to change global PDP, um, but um, 
um, he, he, he feels this is not a major point and he's actually now quite comfortable that the current um, mechanism on the global PDP approval is quite um, accountable and a strong mechanism of accountability. So he, he's okay without um, making suggestions for the changes on the global PDP. One thing I wanted to ask is this is actually, we don't need to have a further explanation um, to the uh, on the global uh, mailing list, but I did uh, give a summary of um, of how we could we could have potentially reply to um, and describe our position to soon. So, um, if you have any comments, feedback, um, uh, or you feel differently, then I'll please uh, give your feedback on the list. But I don't think we need a reply to the NL um, the NL global list on this issue. Um, does anybody have any comments on this? If not, uh, let's move to another um, another point. Uh, so this is um, issue. Oh, I seem to have lost my Excel sheet now. <laughs> oh, where did I put it? So I think we're on a. Um, a12 recording. So that's um, being done by the secret um, NRL secretariat. Thank you once again for going through all the um, past uh, recordings of the meeting and convert them into MP4. So that's done. Um, A13, our version control. So that's being worked on, and um, we actually addressed this per partially uh, um, in terms of the URL. And uh, all the points are mentioned by Andrew Dahl. Um, oh, effect on the existing MOUs. Um, so whether um, a proposal would affect the existing MOUs, NL MOU and ASO MOU. This is something that I actually uh, was intending to confirm on the mailing list. Um, I sent a, a, a created a thread on the mailing list and simply to explain that this doesn't affect the existing MOUs and then the transition this time um, <clears throat> is related to the IANA uh, operation and neither of the MOUs um, cover this point. So that's what I um, mentioned on the CRISPR mailing list and I continue to welcome other feedback on the mailing list. Does anybody feel that you want to comment on this the topic right now? Uh, Craig, thank you for um, stating that you don't think that two MOUs need to change, which is consistent with my um, with the, my suggested position as well. So let's move to um, A15, Internet um, Number I Community IN. A review process on IANA function. We actually covered this at the call today. And there's a, actually a list of the principles that he actually was suggesting. So you can take a look here. And we covered including how we would address the frequency of the review. So that's done. Um, A16, RI accountability, that's done. So we keep the current um, um, description related to RI accountability as it is. Um, A18, determining support for the final proposal to ICG. So that's already covered at the call today. Um, so we'll I'll go through the standard process as suggested by Andre. And then um, A19, describe the global process in uh, section six. Oh, yes, this is the part that we actually need to uh, add more description. So we do have um, the basic description for the regional process, but um, his observation is that we don't have um, um, enough description about how Chris team has conducted the process and uh, how we observe the level of consensus achieved and things like this. So um, this is something that um, we, we need to work on before the final draft. and. Um, I'm actually happy to volunteer to draft of this part to, um, unless anybody feels that you would like to volunteer as well. 
additional uh, volunteers welcome, of course. No, I'm not hearing from anybody. So um, I'll, I'll work on this um, before the final draft. Actually, no, I mean the second draft. And then I'll be 12, um, be 20. Um, so post the second draft of the mailing list uh, in the email text format. This is actually being uh, done for the edited version already, and then uh, we can certainly do the same for the uh, second draft and the final draft as well. Um, A21, we will turn events to facilitate discussion. Um, this was discussed at the last uh, call, on the seventh call, that we there was no consensus to facilitate this. And we thought it's better to um, receive all feedback under the standard um, um, process on the global IANA mailing list. Um, A22, some editorial change or suggestions made on three points. This, um, I actually raised this on the Chris T mailing list. And as I mentioned, if there's no further comments after uh, 24 hours, we'll incorporate these uh, suggestions on our second draft. And then I think the rest is the um, issues that we've agreed to work on as Chris team. So work on the improvement of Section 5, where Nirani has volunteered to work on the draft. And um, so we're waiting for the updated draft from Nirani incorporating Alan's comment. And then we'll give 24 hours window for further feedback. Um, A24. Um, fill in all regional processes in Section 6. So we're waiting for um, information from Erin and LACNIC region. We already have volunteers from each uh, region. And it might be good to um, confirm um, maybe until when you are able to send this uh, draft by. Um, Rani, I, ha I see your um, hand. Um, Rani, please. Yeah. It's time for you to go to work. I'm doing a little meeting right now first, and then we're going to go to work. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Someone needs to mute the mic. Right. I put that in. Um, that was lying on the floor. I put it on um, Soli's dresser, I think. Soli, real dresser? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Hello. Oh. We can hear you. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we can okay. hear you. Well, thanks for my, I'm using that microphone. Um, I lost my. No, yes, I lost my train of thought. Uh, no, my. I tried to flag earlier. Actually, I'm happy to. It was regarding um, section six, I believe it is, uh, the process part. Uh, and I just offered to help you, Izumi, uh, if if you needed the help. Uh, I think it's a really important section, this one. It needs to, I think, at the moment, it gives sort of an overview, but I think we need to be very clear about the process that we've gone through. Um, and especially since there hasn't been a, a huge discussion on the mailing list, I think it's important to show also that there have been uh, consultations along the way and that we have received a lot of feedback um, well, before December. Uh, so I think it's really important to, to write this section well. And, and um, I think you have a lot on your plate, Izumi, so I can, I can work with you on that if you, if you need me to. Great, thank you. Um, I think it's very good observation and uh, the point that we should focus. And I, it would be very, very helpful, Nirani, if you could um, um, help me and um, I'm, maybe I can focus more on looking at the general um, status and then certainly um, work with you to um, uh, draft this part as well. But I think your help would be very, very appreciated. Thank you, Nirani. So, um, so this, I think we've covered the part about um, the global process, and then um, I think we're on section 24. 
So fill in all regional processes in section six. So um, would um, the volunteers from LACNIC come? Um, so I think, thank you, Esteban, for clarifying that it, we hope to have it done in next 48 hours. So that's um, where fifth now, so by the seventh. Okay. Um, would that be would that give you enough time, Michael, to um, incorporate this uh, before we publish the draft on the eighth? Okay, thank you, Michael, that um, for confirming that this is fine. And um, so let's uh, set some on uh, the same timeline for Aaron region. So I believe while well, Michael and John has volunteered to work on this draft, and um, and um, we're looking forward to the draft within the next uh, 48 hours. Thank you, Michael, for clarifying this. Yes, and then um, and the last point. So, oh, this is the point that um, Paul has actually uh, shared. Um, the, the points to be covered on the SLA, and we already discussed this at the call today. So, um, I think we're pretty good. Um, um, Alan. Uh, yes, Zoom. Um, the, there are also the issues raised in the uh, message from JP Nick, which are not yet reflected on the spreadsheet. Um, I, I did send a, a message to the CRISP internal mailing list with uh, some suggested updates to the spreadsheet, but that was very uh, short time before this meeting, so they haven't been incorporated yet. Um, if you like, I can go through them now. Thank you, Alan, please. Okay, uh, so the first one was uh, to check that the document makes it clear that there's no direct involvement by the NTIA, except that they do have a role in conducting SLA reviews. Okay, so we need to check that the document says that. Um, there were some suggestions about the contract with the IANA functions operator. Um, it's important to have an SLA to ensure accountability, transparency, and to have a complaint resolution process. And uh, I think we already have most of those things, but we just need to verify. And uh, there might be something missing that we have to add. Uh, the next issue was the, uh, there were three, four related issues about re the review committee, and we did speak about them all earlier during this call. Uh, the review committee members should have sufficient knowledge um, that it may be useful to define key points for the review in the document, and the review committee members should be selected by the RR communities. We did speak about all that, and I volunteered to edit the document accordingly. Thanks. Thank you, Alan. So um, I think we're quite uh, we're, we're good on all the issues listed. Um, did we actually do we actually have from the point from um, Andrew Sullivan on this list? I believe not. Um, but I think um, Andrew Sullivan has um, raised two points. One is related to the um to the description of um, the reverse zones. And I believe this point is already being um, addressed by Alan by suggesting um, a draft, uh, suggesting a text, a revised text. And then I think um, he was quite happy with the suggested text. So the next step would be to incorporate this uh, um, Alan's uh, text uh, into our second draft. And then the second point that um, Andrew raised was whether we are going to cover in the case when only the number resource community wants to change the IANA operator and not the other two function uh, functions. How do we address this issue and what do we want to clarify the term of um, uh, the contract termination? Andre. 
Thank you, Simi. Yeah, well, I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was our main assumption that we are acting not in isolation, but we are not dependent on other communities, right? So we define our own faith, and by we, I mean uh, the numbering communities, right? Perhaps we can make it more clear, uh, either in the section when we discuss the SLAs or some way in the text, that here, when we talk about IANA function, we talk about numbering resource function. And when we talk about SLAs, those SLAs cover just this particular function. And when we talk about termination, again, we talk about this particular function. And um, uh, when I said in isolate, not in isolation, I think that might require um, coordination with other communities should we decide to move to another operator. I'm not sure we should cover that necessarily in the response. Yes, I agree with your observation, Andre. And I think as long as we actually clarify um, the con um, the condition that we might uh, terminate the contract on our own, just simply from the numbers community perspective, and um, and what would be the termination condition, then I think that would address this point. And um, Narani, please. Thank you. Um, I agree with Andre. I didn't also, it wasn't entirely clear to me when I, I read uh, Andrew Sullivan's uh, mail, but I don't think he necessarily, uh, I'm not saying that you're suggesting that, but I don't think he's asking for us to define all that here. But I think he's, he, he's saying that it is assumed that we have um, an independent contract, so to speak, but that needs to maybe be made a little bit more explicit. And, and I agree with that. I think that can be done without having to define uh, all those things in this text. Yes, I agree uh, with your interpretation, Anurani, of um, Andrew's point. And I think um, so if for uh, you and Paul, who have uh, volunteered to work on this SLA part, could you uh, take a look at um, Andrew's point once again? And then um, I think he's simply looking for clarity in the language rather than requesting for something new to be added. So um, if you could just uh, take, uh, take a look again on um, Andrew's point and then see if, um, if the uh, current uh, draft language is sufficiently clear to his point. Would you be able to do that, Nurani and Paul? Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Nurani. So I think, um, and then I agree with um, with Alan's suggestion that we should add this uh, Andrew Sullivan's point on the Excel sheet. Actually, I, I think this is actually added in the version of the Excel that I sent on the Christine mailing list. Um, so this is the latest version. Um, so I sent the one after John. So um, I think this is reflected. And um, but I will um, resend this the version that after deleting um, the two parts, which is um, suggested actions to be taken by Christine and uh, listing the names of volunteer. So, and then I will send the version that can be posted up on the, on the NL website as the official um, current status of Christine. And you can actually um, confirm whether we have all the issues listed, uh, including the comments from JP Nick and um, the comments from um, Andre, Andrew, Andrew Sullivan. So, um, are we all good on the status and the issues list? I'm not seeing any further um, hands up. So, um, thank you all uh, for staying up uh, for additional 20 minutes. And uh, I'd like to um, close the meeting this time. And then, so let's, um, let's um, it's, the next meeting is uh, scheduled for the 7th um, of January, the same time. So thank you very much. Thank you.